join us um, as we enter into uh, music that, that uh, opens up for us some of the mystery of God's presence and abiding love. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, 
and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray let your continual mercy O Lord cleanse and defend your church and because it cannot continue in safety without your help protect and govern it always by your goodness through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen reading from the prophet Isaiah. Tell everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which, is not, which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaf and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Creator, and Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe this past week you have found just what you wanted in a real summer tomato or a perfectly ripened peach or a farmer's market cantaloupe, sweet and rich, so much so that you can almost eat the whole melon in one setting. This time of year points us towards a fullness of creation, a fullness of harvest already there in our lives, all around us, whether it's the sound of the 17-year summer cicadas feasting, which are abundant in my ears right now, uh, or the view of gnats hovering over a stream bed, only evaporating after a fish lurches out of nowhere, or the overgrowth of vegetation everywhere around us. The creation itself, as much as it is in peril, conveys a giving over of its riches to the creatures that depend upon it. St. Paul uses the word kenosis for the self-giving that happens to us in Christ, in God, in creation itself. The whole order of creation is meant to be give itself to us and give itself to life and to fulfillment of life. Where do you find absolute fullness? Where do you come to a deep sense of completeness that all is full? Where do you encounter a richness in life that can't be added to because there is more than you can comprehend already? You might say when getting that perfect summer tomato, it's like having a million dollars at your disposal. Few things in life can match that, can they? It's even a better gift if you've waited for it from your garden or if someone has given you one as a gift. And what if your sense of wealth and all you needed in life could be found in one amazing tomato? And if you don't love tomatoes, substitute something else for your summer food that you think conveys fullness to you. Jesus describes that kind of experience in his parable of the pearl of great price, where a farmer sells all he has to buy that one pearl that's worth everything. That one thing that conveys the incredible gift of the kingdom of God, of God's abundance giving to us now. This giving to us by God is what today's scriptures, Isaiah, the psalmist, Jesus, want to reveal to us. Isaiah shows a people who are fed freely, without price, through the reign of the good king David. The psalmist described God's hand being opened at every creature being filled. Jesus does this in healings and feeding of the 5,000 in today's gospel 
and there's many things left over, 12 baskets full. Everything he says and does, says God provides, God gives. As many churches use that expression, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Our scriptures call us to stare down and find in us and among us and around us this discovery of fullness upon fullness, grace upon grace, and to act upon that fullness in our lives. I'm grateful to be back from vacation, which is always a gift of contemplating God's creation and time with family. I say I go there to find my porpoise in life. Please forgive that joke. Um, but I often do spend time out on the ocean where harbor porpoises feed, and it fills me up to watch them and ride on waves. I also witnessed some important growth in my family members and, and gave some time to stargazing at the beauty of the heavens. And after more than 20 years of waiting, was able to witness a tremendous comet with a tail, one like those that probably possibly brought water to our planet and to our whole solar system or the universe, making our planet our island home, as we'll say later, a verdant paradise in space. All these things fill me up to the brim. In our gospel reading today, the crowds come to Jesus who needs time alone after his dear friend and mentor, John the Baptist, has been murdered by King Herod, one of Israel's own people, who has turned on them and on his own family. He needs time alone. Jesus needs time alone with God back in the desert where he was so close to God and found fullness even in his hunger out in the wilderness. However, on discovering Jesus' presence, crowds of people pursue him to hear his teaching and to be healed by him. Jesus needs time alone, but instead he is moved by compassion for the crowds. Literally, he takes the feeling he has in his gut for the people he sees. Splogvidzomai in Greek. It's a, it's a term which means from the gut, compassion from the gut. He does something about it at compassion and calls the disciples to act as well. When it gets late, the disciples concerned about the lack of food and Jesus tells them they are the ones to give the crowds food. You give them something to eat, he says, but how they wonder. And whether it is a bend the laws of physics miracle or a miracle of real generosity, just as Jesus' heart turned towards the people, where there was a miracle of generosity where the people would share what little they have with one another, I don't know. But I would argue that this is possibly the greatest miracle, that miracle of generosity, where on that hillside, they overcome all the differences between all those who gather all the racial and economic differences, all the religious differences, where they overcome kosher laws and people realize in the presence of Jesus, all they have is a gift from God and meant to be shared. As Jesus takes what he has, gives thanks for it to God, breaks it and gives it to the disciples to give to everyone. There is more than enough for everyone with baskets of food left over. This is the witness of scripture and of Jesus. Their lives are full already. This is the meaning of the Eucharist, of our great thanksgiving. We are to gather together past all our differences and receive and take and give thanks and break and share just like Jesus says to the disciples, you give them something to eat. It is from this very pattern in our life that we discover we have enough and not only enough, but more than enough. Fill yourself up. Take what God gives you. Receive it. You that are thirsty, drink, Isaiah says. You that are hungry, eat. Eat and fill up. Take it in. 
this is always the message of Jesus in our scripture, that there's more than enough to go around in our world. And you and I are responsible to share in finding and giving and giving back. You and I are called to reveal what Isaiah, the psalmist, and re Jesus revealed, an underlying abundance of fullness in our lives. Find it, take it, receive it. You know where it is for you. Take it in. Just before I went on vacation, I witnessed one of our parishioners who was moved by compassion, literally from her gut, like Jesus felt after seeing long lines of people in the food bank, deciding to turn her gardens from what she thought to be were dedicated for flowers into gardens dedicated for food. Even through a time where she could barely drag herself out of bed because of the coronavirus, she and her friends came to water that garden to make sure she would have fresh vegetables to give. It was a call from God out of the abundance that she has. She heard Jesus say, you give them something to eat. You can do it. I'm grateful for our congregation's continued generosity towards supporting those in need through facets supporting Shrinemont this week and those whose employment depends upon our camp for food for thought and through the discretionary fund for members of our church and those in our community who are struggling. One of our youngest members came in with his allowance money to give those to those who are struggling. So many are responding and moved from their gut. Another of our members is planning for how to hold the hypothermia shelter. You give them something to eat. Fullness is the center point of our communion celebrations. We are given, each given to and to be receivers of the complete love of God for us in Christ. No one is left out. All are invited to the table. This fullness is meant to extend into our everyday lives and our world. And as Christians, we are always get to say that there is enough for everyone, enough as a feast, and we are called to find and to share it. It is the vision of the gospel. Any system that tells people we don't have enough isn't what God has in mind. God has provided. You feed each other. Scripture is a witness to an alternative life, an active resistance to the world people have made versus the one God has made. Go witness it and stare down the fullness. The death of another John this week John Lewis has reminded me of the Christian witness of fullness. Here was a man who had endured so much discrimination and abuse, but who was not bitter, a person determined to live in a way we should all live. He was about forgiveness. He was about vision. He was determined never to give up that dream that someday all would find themselves with the same freedoms, the same access to education, the same joy in life. He had a vision of abundance that he acted upon, that God had already accomplished the relationships we long for with one another. And he was just living it out day by day with a joyful witness to that truth. The same is true for Howard Thurman, who will study this month on Monday nights from 7.30 to 8.45 and in a very short book of five short chapters, he gives spiritual resources to those, to all of us who wish to read them. They're wonderful reflections. Uh, he is not an angry prophet, but he's a mystic. And every time you look into his writings, you are filled up. He gives resources for all of us. This vision inspires Martin Luther King Jr. And you'll hear echoes of his writings in in King's speeches and moves so many to a sustained vision of scripture towards justice that comes out of compassion, a fullness that's there already. It's a vision that changes our lives and our world if we let it. This poem of Howard Thurman's conveys what I'm talking about and gives us the kind of resource we need. It goes, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Thurman writes, 
long before I was born, God was at work creating life, nature, and the world of men and things. The worlds were ideas in the mind of God that had been realizing themselves through the ages. God is not through with creation. God is not through with me. In quietness and confidence shall be my strength. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. In many ways, I am getting acquainted with myself. Always I seek a deeper understanding of my true self, the very core of me. What I would be and am not yet reassures me. Through my innermost self, I find my way to God. I shall acquaint myself with him and be at peace. I will fly in the greatness of God as the marsh hen flies, filling all the space twixt the marsh and the skies. What I seek beyond is what I am finding within. The beyond is within. The signature of God is all around me in the rocks, in the trees, in the minds of men. I will fly in the greatness of God as the marsh hen flies. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I can never be overcome by evil until the evil that threatens moves from without, within. This does not mean that I shall not be hurt by evil shall not be frustrated by evil, that I shall say that evil is not evil. I shall see the travail of my own life with evil and be unafraid, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. Howard Thurman. How are you feeling full? How do you find fullness? How are you called to act upon that fullness? How are you feeling compassion for people in need? And how are you acting upon it? After this story we hear today, Jesus goes back to being alone with God. And it's a back and forth process for him of serving and being restored, of serving and being restored. What do you need in this time to be filled up by the abundance of your life? or to respond with compassion to the needs of the world. One of the things I'm working on and several others in our congregation have been thinking about is how we can help families in this time as we look ahead to the school year. Please reach out to me if you have interest or ideas or a feeling in your gut how Holy Comforter can respond. Find the fullness, find the compassion, act upon it. Amen. I invite you to affirm your faith as I affirm mine in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
as we move now into the prayers of the people, I invite you to find the chat function on your device and to uh, type in the prayers, the names of those you would like for us to hold in our prayers. We'll all be able to see that and, and to pray through the week. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and for those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. I just invite your prayers for all those who have been named in our prayers that people have typed in in this time. Just invite your thanksgiving and prayers for the upcoming marriage of Gretchen De Pasquale and George Kochev this upcoming Saturday. Pray for all those in harm's way of Hurricane Isaiah's. We give thanks for Bishop Susan's end of chemotherapy and for her continued health and well-being and thanksgiving for her leadership. We pray for protesters seeking to undo systemic racism and those who will work within our systems for greater justice, for police who are striving to serve, and for reform of policies that injure the dignity of people, and for those suffering from coronavirus, we pray also for families and children and youth looking ahead to fall. Help us support one another. For John Lewis's peaceful witness and Howard Thurman's witness. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as we prepare for the peace, I invite you to change your device to gallery view so we can see each other. And reminder that you can scroll down to see more than the nine squares that I get on my device uh, over the time. And um, you can also use the chat function again if you'd like to um, exchange the peace using words. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, good to see you. It's great. Very helpful to see faces and, and worship together and, and hold each other in mind and our prayers. Um. I saw that last prayer come in about Emmy Moore, who's uh, celebrating her 99th birthday, um, and just give thanks for, for her. I think she's our oldest parishioner right now. Uh, so uh, hold Emmy up in your prayers with thanks for her, 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 her witness. Yeah, she's so, so lovely. Um, uh, just welcome again to Zoom Worship. I'm so glad glad everyone has joined us. Um, we have Zoom Worship on the first and third Sundays, and then uh, we have pre-recorded worship on.
second, fourth, and fifth Sundays of this month. And we'll have outdoor worship on those Sundays, pop-up church on Saturday evenings at seven. And we'll be looking to potentially add another another one of those outdoor churches. We're asking that question because it's they are very popular now. They're getting gonna be well well subscribed if people feel comfortable coming outside, but and so they're they're lovely. Uh, just encourage you to think about Trinemont as we uh, anticipate that our parish retreat can't happen this year. Uh, you can go and stay as a family unit at Shrinemont. That's a great way to support them and support yourself, get some time out, or to go um, and give a donation to Shrinemont. People have been giving donations to Shrinemont as well already. Uh, again, I mentioned on August, starting tom tomorrow night, August 3rd, and for Monday nights in, in August, we have a wonderful book study. You can download it on Kindle, and there are five short chapters, Jesus and the Disinherited, and it's just a, a gorgeous book. Uh, about spiritual work that we we are called to do and think about it so it's really helpful i encourage you to to open yourself up to howard thurman's writings he's such a visionary uh, please note the other announcements from the couple word pennywise is taking place now happening on tuesdays through saturdays 10 to 2. you can volunteer or donate during hours uh, please think about that farmer's market continues our regular support of Centering prayer, book study, centering prayer on Mondays at 1.30, book study, Monday night, Compline, Tuesday night, noonday prayer, Wednesday, um, and uh, faith and Corona offerings, grace space, and Reiki are, are being offered. So you are ways to restore and refresh yourself regularly. Uh, please join us afterwards for coffee hour. And it's a great way to meet people. We break into small groups during that time and connect briefly. And, uh, and so again, welcome. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give god thanks and praise god of all power ruler of the universe you are worthy of glory and praise glory to you forever and ever at your command all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, 
born of a woman to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, he, we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, that they may be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Please join me in the words of invitation by Alphonsus de Ligori. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith 
with Thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the babe of Bethlehem bring you peace. May the child of Nazareth bring you joy. May the man of Galilee bring you strength. May the Christ of Calvary bring you courage. May the risen Jesus bring you hope and the ascended Christ a foretaste of God's glory. And may God's blessings, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and fullness to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.